And before they or you get any ideas, I will choose my own wife. What on earth do you mean? Well, they're clearly going to push one of the daughters at me. They'll have fixed on that when they heard I was a bachelor. Lady Mary Crawley. I do hope I'm not interrupting. Lynch, I think we'll go back by the South Lodge. Very good, my lady. Lady Mary, I hope you didn't misunderstand me. I was only joking. Of course. And I agree. The whole thing is a complete joke. So what are they like? She's nice enough, but he's very full of himself. Why do you say that? Just an impression. Let's go down and you can decide for yourself. Welcome to Downton. Thank you. You've been so kind. What a reception committee. <laughs> I wish I shared your enthusiasm. Our dentist is horrid. When will I go to him, then? Oh, he treated all of us when we were children. You know how the English are about these things. Cousin <laughs> Mary. Hello. Are we expecting you? No, but I wanted to see you. I looked for you yesterday at church. I wasn't feeling up to it. None of us were. So, if there's anything I can do, please ask. There isn't. But thank you. Is your life proving satisfactory? Apart from the great matter, of course. Women like me don't have a life. We choose clothes and pay calls and work for charity and do the season. But really, we're stuck in a waiting room until we marry. I've made you angry. My life makes me angry, not you. I'm sorry, I wish I could think of something to say that would help. There's nothing, but you mustn't let it trouble you. It does trouble me. It troubles me very much. Then that will be my consolation prize. Good night, Cousin Matthew. Good night. Matthew this, Matthew that, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. Oh, Mother, don't you see? He has a son now. Of course he didn't argue with the entail. Why would he? So are you doing any more church visiting with Edith? My mother's trying to set something up. Well, watch out. I think she has big plans for you. Then she's in for an equally big disappointment. Maybe I'll shine by comparison. Mary, we're going. Maybe you will. How are the cottages? They're coming on wonderfully. I'd love to show you. I'm glad you and Mary are getting along. There's no reason you can't be friends. No, no reason at all. I don't suppose there's any chance that you could sort of start again. Life is full of surprises. It seems we've both been thrown over for a bigger prize. Heavens, is that the time? You're not going. The truth is my head's splitting. I don't want to spoil the party, so I'll slip away. Would you make my excuses to your parents? Excuse me, Sir Anthony. Mm. Has Mr Crawley left? Uh, yes, my lady. But what about the car? Branson can't have brought it round so quickly. Why, well, he said he'd rather walk, my lady. Thank you. Mary can be such a child. What do you mean, darling? She thinks if you put a toy down, it'll still be sitting there when you want to play with it again. Good night, Mother. How was your evening? Did you enjoy yourself? Quite. The thing is, just for a moment, I thought... Never mind what I thought, I was wrong. Good night. And now, 
When really you ran off last night, I hope you hadn't thought me rude. <laughs> Certainly not. I monopolised you at dinner. I had no right to any more of your time. You see, Edith and I had this sort of bed. Oh, please, don't apologise. I had a lovely evening. I'm glad we're on speaking terms. Now, I should look after my mother. Why was Cousin Matthew in such a hurry to get away? Don't be stupid. I suppose you didn't want him when he wanted you. And now it's the other way around. Are you feeling strong enough to go home? I think so. If you'll take me. Here. Wear my coat to cover the blood. You'll look more normal. Lean on me. When you laugh with me or flirt with me, is that a duty? Are you conforming to the fitness of things? Doing what's expected? Don't play with me. I don't deserve it. Not from you. You must be careful not to break Sybil's heart. I think she has a crush on you. Well, that's something no one could accuse you of. Oh, I don't know. I see me speak in a spirit of mockery. You should have more faith. Shall I remind you of some of the choicest remarks you made about me when I arrived here? Because they live in my memory as fresh as the day they were spoken. Oh, Matthew, what am I always telling you? You must pay no attention to the things I say. And he asked me to marry him. Heavens, what did they put in them? <laughs> I'm serious. He proposed to me. Do you love Matthew? Yes. I think perhaps I do. I think I may have loved him for much longer than I knew. Of all of you, Sybil might find joy in a cottage, but not you. We don't know it'll be a boy. Exactly. So ask Matthew to wait until the child is born. If it's a girl, you can wed him happily and all will be as it was before. But if I delay, won't he think I'm only after him for his position? Besides, I'm not sure I want to put him off, even without the title. We get on so well, you know, and he's terribly clever. He might end up Lord Chancellor. And he might not. Oh, come along, Mary, be sensible. Can you really see yourself dawdling your life away as the wife of a country solicitor? Let me get this clear. At Sybil's ball, you said you'd give me your answer the day you got back, and now you say you will not. Why do we have to rush into it? I need to be sure, that's all. But you were sure. Shall I tell you what I think has altered you? My prospects, because nothing else has changed. No! Yes! If your mother's child is a boy, then he's the heir, and I go back to living on my wits, and you'd rather not follow me. Oh, Matthew, you always make everything so black and white. I think this is black and white. Do you love me enough to spend your life with me? If you don't, then say no. But I don't understand. Nothing's changed. Everything's changed. You can't be sure I was going to refuse you, even if it had been a boy. Because I'm not. That's the point. I can't be sure. Of you, or of anything, it seems. Would you have stayed? If I'd accepted you? Of course. So I've ruined everything. You've shown me I've been living in a dream. And it's time to return to real life. <laughs>